Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to our farm, Cornucopia Orchards. Join me today. We'll be working on our Pacific Northwest farmhouse, doing some electrical, some plumbing, and then we're going to work on restoring our old trailer to sell. So we're up here in the kids' bath, and our roughing for the shower drain, the shower tub, is 15 and a half out from the wall, and eight and a half out. So what we're doing right now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. The reason you have to cut out that much of the floor is because obviously the tub is gonna sit right on the floor unless you have something that's lifting and holding it up and spacing it up, in which case you have to have some kind of additional trimming along the bottom on the outside of these tubs that have the integral curtain is what they call it, which this one does not and I'd rather not do. That's just given us um, an extra wide channel to be able to put that plumbing rough exactly where it needs to go. And you can see in this space here, we've got a toilet there, it's coming down. We've got a, uh, a shower bath, it's gonna come over and then kick in. Um, we've got three different lines of HVAC that are coming up and that's a lot of stuff to work through right there. So. The one that has to go first, in my opinion, is actually the plumbing. These have some flexibility to them. After they're past this hole, it's flex duct. That has no flexibility to it. I mean, you have to meet slope and you have to be able to make it all fit together. So because it butts up against, it's gonna come down a little bit further. Whereas that was like up higher than that by a little bit. So this is just gonna allow us, in essence, to run almost straight over. It's still got a little bit of a downward slope, which is perfect. So this is just on temp, that's just on temp. You can see we're below here where we should be. This will go up. So all I'm doing is I'm finding out what this leg needs to be. We're talking uh, about 10 and three quarters plus three quarters of an inch. So 11 and a half inches. And then I just gotta make sure that that's about what I get when I put all this together. It's almost like it's at 11 and a half inches. And this will this will fit up into there just fine. When this piece is attached into here, that we have this just the way we want it. It's got to be slightly uphill. So we'll go ahead and get this one side glued. And then we've got to glue this one and that one probably at the same time and then shove this whole thing up into position because I don't know if I have enough wiggle room on this thing. I'm gonna to have to do it fast. And by nature, the, so long as there is some slope on this, this, this piece here, this is a two inch coming into a three. So it's always gonna be dumping in, unless you have it below the plane, it's always gonna dump in above the flow of the waste coming from this other direction. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. We're about a quarter to a, uh, three eighths off of this line. So we're gonna go ahead and get this glued up now on the center spine, glue the outside so we'll throw this up and uh, see how that fits in there. We're gonna test the dry fit real quick to see if we're looking like we're gonna be good. I thought we will be good, but we're looking like we're going to be good. I think so. Okay, the side goes in first. Oh, we're real close. I don't know if we're going to make it. I'm gonna have to go and unscrew that. I 
I did get this ABS connection here for the toilet flange secured in. We have a sufficient slope and we're good to go on connecting that piece in. So near catastrophe there, diverted, almost wasted that entire piece all the way across. <laughs> good times. Um, so that is all secured in now and we are ready to move on to getting that two inch over to the shower and then over and up to the sink. The shower is the critical one for what we're doing right now, really, but we could do both and it would help us out. Yeah. This fir tree right here, all these little lower branches, you can see that I cut all along there to limb this thing up. That is all fresh growth from last summer early. No, 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 the trailer, Clarky. The trailer, not there. We're cleaning. <laughs> so this is the trailer that I use to bring home um, a variety of different types of materials for the house build. We've done some haying with this and we got it for a pretty good price. We had it um, fixed up electrically. We do need to get a new stand and you know, it could could use painted it really for anything heavy duty does need a new decking material this is pt and it doesn't look too bad right now we had it pressure washed the other day boys and i uh, worked that through and you know dual uh, dual three and a half k axles so 7k it's a nice wide trailer could handle more than the axles um as far as weight goes um on the metal it's just the axles are the limiting factor there you know, needs needs some some new paint and the decals are okay, but they're not very expensive to replace. So we're trying to decide whether to try and sell it as is, or whether to you know do do the work to make it nice. But we're probably going to sell this and hopefully make a little money off of it, and then that that's going to go towards the house. So here's our little trick: if you don't have dimensions for this guy, these two are the same. It's a U. So if we get this guy and we say, oh, he's about four inches, we go over here, that one says four and a half, bring this guy until he's at four and a quarter, split the difference, see if it's the same. Yep, four and a quarter. And then we line up this center divot right here, that's halfway point on this pipe, and we got six inches. So I'm just gonna run this bad boy down about there. Okay. And then just gonna take it across. Hopefully they're more or less parallel to each other. We are at 11 and a quarter plus. So we're gonna go up to five and a quarter plus. And there you have it. That's where we need to be drilling our hole to get this perpendicular cut over. And then we'll turn once we're into this channel to bring it down. In the last house we owned, the kitchen was on one side of the house, and 30 feet plus away was all of the rest of the drainage lines. The kitchen went all the way over in one and a half inch pipe with maybe a 16th or 30 second slope to the main bathroom. Naturally, it plugged up completely in the two years we owned the house and I almost had to replace it when I couldn't get it unclogged. It turned out to be years and years of built up grease had filled the entire pipe. A real plumber managed to get it cleared and we were quite relieved. We'd been using scalding hot water and Drano to try and clear it and he explained that we probably had just managed to temporarily decongeal the mass and then when it re-solidified it plugged what little pipe hadn't been blocked. Better for the pipes, the blockage, and our septic system to use a biological agent to eat away the organic material. Great advice. It makes sense. Biology is how your septic tank can go so long without pumping, after all, and that experience is a constant reminder for me now to do my best on this build. It's gonna work out pretty good. It's gonna let that kind of lock 
in place for a minute before I go, come back and glue this piece in. Uh, give me a chance to make sure I'm still situated right there where I want to be. Now, this is the fun one, by the way. Not my beard, not my hair. Oh gosh, dear gosh. I hate you. Plumbing is not my favorite. That's delightful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Nice big old fat blob of this stuff <laughs> right in my hair. I don't care if it dyes the hair black, but I'd really prefer it not stick my hair together in a clump. Because if that happens, one thing for sure will ensue. My younger child will find it and he will rip it off of my head. Uh... Could be worse, honestly, could be worse. So Casey is out helping me today and we've got most of the rough boxes in, but we are working on the ethernet placement now. Um, I know this is the year 2023 and most of you have long since moved on to just Wi-Fi, but um, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit old now and uh, I've been gaming since Wi-Fi started and it's just not the same thing as a good ethernet connection especially if you're out in the sticks and your connection is spotty to begin with, like ours is. So Ethernet, we're taking to basically wherever we think there might be a desk or potentially a TV and sticking it in that location. And then that way, regardless of what the technology is at the time, we have some way of connecting. And you can see that there's a just a red line to our height. And we're just going to measure that, mark it real quick. So we're upstairs in the upstairs bathroom for the kids and we have toilet, we have shower. There's a little friend, nicely lined there, should be perfect. And over here, this is the vanity. So sink is there. Here up above is the beam. We have to be on this side to stay in the attic. This side is living space and there are no walls crossing this way. So what we're shooting for is a vent that comes up kind of right here. So what I've determined here is that this assembly, um, I'm missing a part that I'm gonna need to take from the end there. I have a couple of elbows, but not the right one. I have a long sweep and something else and a vent, and it's, it's very specific what size that I need. I know they make them. They're basically identical to the um, part that goes to a P-trap, which is what I have on there right now. And it just, has instead of a fitting on this end it has an um an inlet instead of a fitting um so i need the other one of these in order to get it to come off just a hair further in one direction this piece needs to come this way further and once i get that then i can finish that out and up and then work in the walls above the other thing that i just concluded with this is that there is not much room here to be able to bring hvac out and get to go through somewhere in here and have it be in that cabinet. So what I'm gonna need to do is take this through and then convert it down to a three and punch it through. And I don't know if Lowe's even carries a three inch flex duct. They might not, I might have to run it in a hard pipe, but if it is that way, it's not a huge deal. Are you being a careful boy? <laughs> so it's a dark day outside 
definitely a bit of a windy, rainy kind of a day. So I'm inside working and um, on a recovering from another cold. So exciting. But what I'm working on right now is something new. So this very dark little corner is a closet and this particular space is under the first floor stairs and behind the kitchen. So it's kind of a great central location and the plans already identified that. That's the place where they're putting the water heater. We're going to do two. One's going to also be upstairs in the master uh, closet under the stairway up there to supply the upstairs. I like having two in case one fails. It's very, very handy to have at least one shower that's warm. So you can see I've got this zip system board put up here. Um, I figured it is technically a water barrier, but I just needed a backer, some plywood. And it's nice to have this as the backer for my project because it's just a great solid surface. I don't have to wait for drywall. It's in a closet, so, uh, so just the same as your electrical circuits, have a circuit breaker, a main panel. So too, in our case, will our plumbing all of our water supply. So on this beautiful blustery day, I'm working on starting to kind of pre-assemble. So they make, um, and by they I mean several different companies, Shark Bite, I think there's one called Monoblock, a couple of others. They make these completely pre-assembled with valves and everything. So why am I not using one of those? I'm not using one of those because they're very expensive and I honestly couldn't find any that were larger than just very small anywhere that were copper primarily instead of all these connective pieces being plastic. So I have a copper bar, it is connected by non-copper, whatever. Um, and then all of these connections are, you know, the brass shark bite style, not shark bite brand necessarily, but shark bite style fitting. Believe it or not, this system design here cost me less than I could find a single unit that was all plastic. So I sourced this from just all over the place. Only high reviews, only certified to have no lead in it. So none of this has any lead in it. All said and done. And it's still going to be like $500, I think, for this, this system. So expensive. Yes, but to me, it's still worth it. Um, why, why is it worth it for this? Well, I'll tell you why. So here's our electrical main panel circuit breaker. Why do you have all of these to where you can turn them off individually? If there is a problem, you want to be able to just turn off whatever the problem is. Or if you're adding something to one of these lines, let's say, you know, we're, we've got attic plugs here. Um, our attic is not going to be fully finished off for a while, just a reality of, you know, that's the last kind of priority. What if I realize I want more plugs? I, do I have to turn off the whole house? No, I turn off that one breaker and that enables me to be able to work on the attic and to get what I need done, done. And then I flip on that one breaker again and I'm good to go. I didn't have to disturb the rest of the family. So when I go to install all of the water systems into this line, if there's ever a leak anywhere in the system, I can shut off that one valve. That makes, I mean, that's hugely valuable. If there's an issue with the hot water, I actually have the, you know, the ability for us to still take a shower because we're gonna have two um, hot water tanks, one upstairs, one downstairs. And that's also hugely important. And it wouldn't be very difficult for me to actually connect in. So I guess the big thing for me is that this is a modular system. And, you know, it, as I work on it, it's going to be amazing. This takes care of everything except for a few for the upstairs. And we're going to have this is going to be coming from the water heater into here and then down. And this assembly this way, pumping out and then turning top to bottom. I'm only doing that because this one piece is going both ways. So this will be like laundry, uh, dishwasher, first floor, or a hot for sink, because this is the island, right? And so this has to have the water come up from below. And that's where the sink is. And the dishwasher does too. 
And then the laundry is over there. So I'm already pulling through. I might as well just take that one over to there. And that deals with all of the hot water through here. I have one that's not dedicated to anything yet. These two are going to be for outside seasonal faucets. This one right here, I just have to add this um, little leg on to and, and put one of these on um, at this point. And then these and these three will service the um, bathroom sink, bathroom shower, and then... Um, good question. What is this for? What are you for? So this third one is actually going up to the kids' bathroom. There are three bathrooms. There's master bathroom, kids' bathroom, and then there's downstairs bathroom right in there. And so these two are going to the downstairs bathroom, but I'm taking them up through over and down, trying to keep everything within the building's envelope, you know, so that we're not losing heat to these being under the floor any more than we have to. These ones, um, they're they're dedicated, those two, and then these three are dedicated for under the floor. So I'm just gonna keep them up as high in the installation as I can, probably like two inches off of the floor sheathing, just in case an errant you know, nail ever came down, but buried deeply into the insulation, so they should be fine. I'll probably thermal wrap them as well. Anywho, this third one goes to the kids' bathroom upstairs. And this is kind of my map. So that's this fixturing. And then I also have an upstairs secondary that's going to run off that upstairs um, water heater planned out. And it's going to be, if we ever did put in a uh, shower in the, in the attic, is what we call it. It's really more of a bonus floor, if you will, or bonus, a huge bonus area. Uh, we'd also want one for the sink. I shouldn't say toilet, that's silly. For sure, right now, master bathroom sinks. There's two, but it'll be one water supply. Shower, and then the kids' bathroom sink and shower. So this, we're going to have joined with one of these valves. What that will let us do is you'll have hot water that can come this way from that water heater, and then hot water that can come this way from the water heater that's upstairs in the master bath um, closet is adjacent to the master bath and the kids bath and then there'll be a valve and a valve and that way you know when you when you go into that master bathroom sh that kids bathroom shower that always will have the capability of running off of one or the other and if we should ever need to we can actually back feed from the upstairs or forward feed from the downstairs and run everything back fed through these it just wouldn't you you know you're bringing back in a half inch into a three inch a three three quarter assembly so you'd only really be able to run one or two fixtures at a time but it would enable us to you know run whatever we needed on those two separate systems together it certainly seems like a pretty clever idea. And there are ways that you can run two water heaters at the same time on the same line in parallel. Um, you can also run them in sequence. And we're not really doing either of those things because the water heaters are not next to each other. And it can cause problems, is my understanding, if they're across the building from each other because one of them will be taking more of the pressure load than the other one will. And... I want to avoid that, but I want to have a backup just in case. Why not? So that's going to be where all of the sink drain goes. And it's also going to be the vent for the bathroom group coming up. So essentially the sink's going to wet vent down and then all that connects in from the shower and the toilet. And then they are wet venting up past the sink. And then right here, it's gonna come up on this side of the beam into the um, attic area. That's gonna just drain across, slight slope over to here, and then take off. And so that needs to be a two inch for the vent in order to satisfy the requirements of the code. I'm just gonna line this up basically right, right here with the edge on the interior of that lip. And we're gonna try cutting it with this sawball. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Yep, even for this application, this sawzall is just dead. All right, let's see if I can not kill myself with this beast. It's kind of overkill, but if I can do this up here, it'd be nice. Well, okay then. You're a beautiful boy, aren't you? I always, for whatever reason, I always do the male end first. I don't do the female end first, and I don't know if that is something that I do because I saw somebody do it, or what the reason is. If anybody knows, feel free to let me know in the comments. That all the way bottomed out, and then make sure we're sitting pretty on the angle. Ladders make for pretty excellent uh, tools at times, and uh, this is no exception. Got my five foot length that I need to fill between uh, the section I stuck up above and the pipe we have down there. And if I'm off by a little bit, it's okay, because I can adjust that upper pipe up and down to get where we need to on level. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button for more. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and leave a comment. It really helps us out a lot. These videos take hours of our time to make and once we hit a thousand subscribers, YouTube will start sharing their revenue with us. See you next time.